This is Cynthia from the training kitchen as you see. We're in the training kitchen. It's a lovely day and I know it's Corona. You know, but I miss you guys. As you see, I'm in the training kitchen. Hi to all my regulars. Hi to the Unitas family. I'm back. And we've got a new thing coming out. We cooked this today. We did special fried rice today. Gotta have the music. I don't know if that's gonna get any higher. Might do. Let me see. Because you know we've got love in the kitchen. <laughs> Is that straight? Looks good. What's going on in here? I'm Rich. How's it going? Heart has just come to check us out as usual in the kitchen. We're making um, special fried rice. Everybody knows from in the kitchen. Since you only use this basmati rice. Basmati. Basmati. See you later, Rich. The other thing as well is this one is actually gluten free which is really nice to cook with so anybody that's got allergies or anything like that or can't have um, normal rice gluten free rice and this is from Morrison's it's really hard to find but Morrison's check out Morrison's definitely basmati rice you can use whatever rice you want long grain rice pre-pluffed but I don't really like them kind of rice but you know basmati is the best Right, along. Everybody be wondering why we got foil paper if we're making special fried rice. Okay, I'll get back to that later. Right, now we've got our... Uh, everybody knows these as um, spring onions. But in the Caribbean, we call them scallion. Right, so we're going to need scallions. And these, these are known as well as bell peppers. Some people call them bell peppers. But I just call them sweet peppers, yeah? Right at the moment we've got orange, it comes in orange, red and yellow and also green as well. But I haven't got a green one here to show you. But um, I mainly cook with like the green ones because that gives the food a nice flavour. And these ones are usually put in salads. Right, also, anybody remember these? Who likes spice? These are our scotch bonnets. That's our little twist. And that will be an option because if you don't like spice, you don't need to put this one in, okay? And we also got our garlic. I'm sure a lot of you remember me telling you how to peg a garlic and how to get the trash off the garlic and where to put the trash? In the bin, right. We've also got onions. These are white onions. Some of you might know the red onions. I know it's not beetroot, they're red onions. And the red onions I prefer to put in salads. When you're putting those in salads, they're really nice in salads. And these ones we're gonna actually use, these are white onions. You can get these from any shop really, or markets. Markets is probably best, because most of your veggies, you can get in a market. You can always get them a pound a bowl. So if you're going off to college, or going off to uni, buy your pound a bowl, you know? And put them in your, put them in your, um, your fridge. Right, we've got mixed veg. This is just a mixed veg with um, carrots, peas, corn and beans if you like any other mixed veg you can always add that or you can actually add broccoli as well and cut it up but we ain't got no broccoli today but this is easy to use this can have in your store cupboard in your freezer yeah but what you do is take it out if you're going to cook it you're going to use it in the next couple of hours you can actually take it out leave it in a dish for it to actually defrost depending on what you're going to actually do but like the fry rice we're going to do we need it to actually defrost out a bit yeah, we're not gonna, we might not use the whole packet. Also as well, we need a bit of oil. The choice of oil, it can be vegetable oil. I don't really use vegetable oil, but I like sunflower, or you can also use olive oil if you want to, if you prefer. And prawns. Everybody recognize these? These ones are already cooked. And these are king prawns. These ones are already cooked already. But um, there's a lot of people that's allergic to fish or seafood. This is just an option. If you're allergic to it, you don't add that. You just add your veggies. Yeah? But that's for later. But what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the fridge because we're not using it yet and we need to keep the prawns cool. We'll also need black pepper, ground black pepper. You can use white pepper if you want or you can ground your own if you're posh. Right? And we're going to need a little bit of salt. You're still wondering, we need butter. You don't put butter in stir fry. Aha, wait for it. Wait for it. We got Jen at the window. Hi! I'm Bradley. Is that Bradley? I can see you, is that Bradley? Right, and also we've got our eggs. Any size eggs. 
There you go. But if everybody remember in the training kitchen, one of our rules about eggs, remember when we clean our eggs and it's not washing the egg underneath the tap. I know some of us did that before, but we clean our eggs and I will show you that later. Right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wash our rice and we're going to put our rice on. Yeah? So while our rice is being cooked, we can get all our other ingredients prepared so that we just put it all together in the end and have a nice meal. Yeah? That you guys must remember, you know, the first thing before cooking, we wash our hands. Yeah? Make sure we wash our hands. As we're going along, when we're dealing with meat and stuff like that, I will show you what you need to do. So make sure your area is clear. Right, and we use cold water to wash the rice. Because what we're doing, we're washing the starch out of the rice. Yeah? Turn your top off, and we're going to wash the rice. Can you see? The rice has got all that, it looks like milky. That's the starch that you're washing off your rice. And then look, look how the starch we've got off. The other thing as well is, you might be nervous, you can still use a smaller pot than this in case all your rice go down the sink. If you're a bit nervous with that, what you can use, you can use a strainer. This is a sieve, but it's a small sieve. But you can get, if you've got a big one, this is called a sieve, yeah? If you're nervous with throwing out your rice, you can always throw, throw, throw it in. Hang on a minute, guys, as usual, you know when we're doing cooking, the music sometimes, the CDs crack. <laughs> See, it come back again, typical. As I was saying, this is a sieve, small sieve though, this is probably for tea. But if you do that with a smaller pot, you can see, you can let the water out without your rice going down the sink. Because you know already, if it all goes down the sink, that's your share of rice. Because rice is grown in a lot of water and it's got a shell on it. I can't find one in there that's got a shell on it. So you look and see if there's any with shells. What I mean by shell, it's like a peanut. Peanut comes in a shell. I mean little monkey nuts. And you have to crush them and then the peanuts inside. The rice is similar to that, but you might find one in two. But this rice is a good quality rice, remember? Basmati. So can you imagine if you didn't wash your rice, all that starch. You see? So we're gonna do it one more time. Right. Right, our rice is ready now. The other thing now that I think everybody's going to be worried about is how much water for the rice that you put in. If you look, you can still see the rice. Some people do a finger test, but because I'm doing a family thing, you just put the rice, the water, a couple of inches above the rice. And the other tip I need to give you is always have your kettle boiling because with rice, you can't take away the water. Because if you put it on the fire and it's cooking, what we call, we don't even call it cooking rice, we call it steaming rice. If you put it on the fire and it's too much water, you've got rice pudding. But this time now, if you've got your kettle boiling, you've got hot water there. When your rice is drying out, but we'll show you that, I'll show you that stage later on. When your rice is, from the apron straight. See? Love. We cook with love. There you go. Look at my apron. I've done so much. Look, it's even torn. Probably need a new one soon. Right, so what we do then, we're going to put it on, but we boil our kettle. While we put it on, we're going to boil our kettle. So we've had hot water to add to our rice. Never add cold water to rice while it's cooking. Yeah? These are tips I'm going to be giving you. Yeah? This is our flame. The other thing as well is learning when I say to turn the flame down. Right? First of all, remember it's cold water that's in the rice. So we want it to boil up a bit, so we give it time to boil up. And this is our lowest flame. That's what we're gonna put the rice on when it's bubbling up and nearly drying out, yeah? But right now we can have it about there to get it going, yeah? All right. Let's get that on. Jesus. Now we put the kettle on before I forget. When you're cooking rice, always have some hot water, either in a saucepan or in a kettle. So how we're going to season our rice now, turn this up a little bit, because I want it to get going. We've got the spring onions, which we call our scallion, but spring onions. We've got salt, and we've got butter. You can use any butter, this just happened to be flora. Buttery. 
Right, and we need the black pepper. So we bring these over. Alright, first of all we're gonna wash off, take the ends off our onions, so-called scallions, take those ends off and any other bits that don't seem to, you know, but don't waste it, not because it don't look good, that don't mean it ain't alright. Just take off all the little bits, yeah, and then we'll put it in our bin, wash it good, sometimes we've got dirt in there, alright, and then we come over to our chopping board. If you don't have a chopping board, good old fashioned plate, right? But because we've got a chopping board, we can use that, but this is how you do it. You put those together, if you want to do them quick, this is what you do. Just slice them like this. Just slice them like that, and that's on the plate. But make sure it's not your mum or your dad's good plate, you know, <laughs> for Sunday dinner. Keep your fingers away from the knife, okay? You can go as slow if you're doing it slow. When you got more confident, you'll be zooming for it like me. And this gives the rice a lovely taste. Yeah, and we put this in our rice. And what we do, we add a bit of salt to the rice. Not a lot, but we add a bit of salt to the rice. And I always add a little bit of black pepper to give it some nice taste. Okay, that should be all right, because the big pot of rice and we add a little bit of butter. Three hearts go. We got Whitney today. Oh my, it's time go by, man. We get back our, our reggae tunes. Right, you put your butter in. The other thing you can just put your fork on there. So they're putting your fork on the countertop. Checking our rice. Give it a little stir. And as you can see now, if you look, if you look into your rice, you can see around the edges, you can see little bubbles forming, yeah? That means your rice, and you can feel the heat coming through as well. That means your rice is, um, the water's getting hot. So soon you'll be seeing the water drying out. And our flame is still up, but we're gonna reduce our flame in a minute, okay? But I will show you when we're reducing it. So remember, keep an eye on that, yeah? Right, we're going over now to get our other ingredients ready. This is an onion. Yeah, so what we do is, if it's easier, we cut the ends off there. But I know everybody hates doing onions. But everybody has to learn, you know, there's no pain, no gain. If you can do waxing, you can peel an onion. I'm sure. And you can cut that end off. You can use goggles, whatever suits. But remember when I said to you that if your eyes are teary, get some blue roll, wet it, and then wipe your eyes, and then sit out for a little bit. Yeah? Right, we're gonna peel our onions. Okay. If you're more comfortable doing it with just your hands, that's fine. Right, there you go. That's nice. Now you know the secret thing. But what you have to do is clean your mess as you go along so there's less to do. Right, our peppers, because what we're gonna do, we're gonna wash everything at the same time. Your bell peppers, right? What we're gonna do, we can cut this bit off. that bit off and we've got the seeds inside you can cut around here cut around here and if you look inside take this bit off look we've got seeds inside and those of you that's got gardens and stuff you can put these on a saucer somewhere in the sun on the windowsill and these will dry and you can plant them outside in the garden there's some more in there you just take those out with your hands put that there do the same again with this, our next colour, and we just cut round it because it'd be nice. It'd be nice in our finished dish with different colour peppers. We want it to look pretty. There you go. Did it all in one go, eh? This is our secret ingredient, which is a Scotch bonnet pepper, right? I know some of you like spicy things. I like spicy things. Yeah? They've got green ones as well and yellow ones. I'm not quite sure how which one's hotter. But I hear there's a purple one or a brown one that's really hot. I've never tried that one. You understand? But depending on how spicy you want it, I'm going to add maybe, because we're not going to use the seeds. I'll put two for that size pot we're going to use. We're not going to use the seeds, we're just going to use it for flavour. 
but we still get a bit of spice. Right. This one now, our garlic. This is our garlic. Easiest way to just spread. Sometimes you've got little pegs of garlic, but this is a good one. But if you're buying garlic, try and get the big ones, because the little ones are very fiddly. If not, if it's fiddly, you can see they come in pegs. Just run your knife down there. Run your knife down there and you've got your peg off. Simple as that. Just use your knife. There you go. You can use your fingers as well if you want to. But these are nice big pegs. Okay, you see that? You might think that's gone off. All you do is just cut that bit off. And that little bit off, you've got your garlic. There you go. We're going to check our rice. Yes, you see, it's come up like that. All we do is we give it a stir. Give it a little stir. At this stage now, if everybody remember, our foil paper, right? Because this pot ain't got no lid, and if you've got a pot that doesn't have a lid, good old foil paper, you know, you can't leave that in there. Right, we just check the size of our pot, and we break a bit off. Listen, there's no ways and graces in the kitchen, you know, just clean the nest. We put it over our pot like that. There you go. You can also use clean film, but I don't think you're like ready for that yet. Fold paper, and what you can do is get a plate, and you put that over it. There you go. And then you turn. Right, let me move this across, and I'll show you the flame for the rice. You turn it to about there, yeah? We have to keep checking it though. Right. Mmm, a lot of people don't like the smell of garlic, you know, but garlic is good for you, you know. Just stay there. Right, we're going to wash these now. So when we start chopping, sometimes you've got dirt. The other thing as well, if you buy it from the market, you might have a little dirt on it. Don't worry about that. Just wash it. And not with washing up liquid either. Just water, cold water. There you go. I'm using a, this is called a colander, but it's easier to just, the water just drain off. Turn your peppers upside down with a wok, but you dare do it. Come on Whitney, where's the next tune? Right, just going to put everything in here now, and we cut it up. Peppers, it's easier to cut them in half, yeah, and then cut them in half again. Okay, we might need that again. If you're not confident with it, you can cut it in four, each bit, and then what you could do is, fingers and then you just go down like this into slices like this yeah and that's gonna look pretty so we cut our bell peppers up mind your fingers mm. up to one side. this bit you can just do that with it okay all your peppers up they don't always have to be the same size but as long as you've got there and then we're going to cut them up fine yeah all right and when you've got them together i'm just going to show you this bit you can just cut them like this it depends on what dish we're making because there's other dishes that you might need them cut bigger it all depends and just cut them like that okay that's how finished and we do that with all the peppers Right, we've got our onion, cut it in half, that's another easy way to do it, and you can do it this way as well, our onions, these are nice soft onions, make sure you use a knife that you're comfortable with, yeah, it might be the first time, I and mean, then just do this, just cut them into bits like this, yeah, there we go, that's our onions, yeah and we'll do that with both onions has anybody ever noticed anything about these onions i'm not crying <laughs> there's no tears this is our garlic what i find the easiest way to do you can even put it that side well it's quite wobbly you could do it like that on the side with the head up and you just slice slice your garlic like this some people might have a garlic crusher in the garlic, if you see that, some of them have like a, let me see if it's in the other one. They have a green vein inside. And I'm sure you can smell the garlic by now. 
This is a young one. The vein is this bit. That's the vein in the garlic. If I'm not wrong, that's what gives it that strong smell. Because sometimes when you eat garlic, you got that strong taste in your mouth. Usually this is green when it's a mature one, I think. But that's where the vein is. And if you smell your finger, wow. You probably think, I ain't gonna eat that and go out with my girlfriend. <laughs> but don't worry, garlic smell will go. And then we just slice our garlic. Mind your fingers though, yeah? That's just in strips, yeah? Or you can do this with your garlic as well. But some people might have a garlic crusher. Or what some other people do. I ain't no professional, you know. This is a Gordon, Gordon Ramsay style. You can put a bit of salt on there with a broader knife. You cut up your garlic like that. You've got a broader knife. And you put some salt on it. And you just do that with on the garlic. Till it crushes out. But it all depends on what you're going to be doing. But with this, it's fine like that. Come on with me, girl. Next tune. One tip I have when you're dealing with hot peppers. Yeah? You take your stem off. Okay, but before you even do that, one of the tips I've got for you is cooking oil. Put a bit of cooking oil on your hands or even wear gloves instead. If you can find gloves like these, if you can't, put a bit of cooking oil all over your hands like this before you even touch it. And then what you're doing is you won't get that strong smell on your hands. But if you want to experiment, you can experiment because I tell you, don't rub your eyes because that will be burning. Right, we take this out, we can put that to the side and what we do, we cut down our pepper like this. The other good thing about Scotch Bonnet, as you Caribbeans and all our ethnic or anybody really, these you can buy pan a bowl as well and you can actually freeze them and then you can take them out one at a time when you need them because I do that at home. And that's a good tip as well, because sometimes you want to buy a lot of um, scotch bonnets, but they always go off so quickly. There you go. Cut the seeds out. Yeah? The seeds as well, you can plant. Yeah? See the tiny seeds? These are seeds. But they are hot. Right, and our scotch bonnet, just cut them like this. Maybe you've got the oil on your hands or you got gloves. I've got gloves on, so... Just cut them like this. We don't really want big chunks. We just want the flavor that goes through it. That every forkful, every spoonful, you get a little taste of that. You know what I'm saying? And then we can just cut them up small. Yeah? Same way. Cut them up small. Okay? We need to check our rice. Right, the food, this might be very hot, so you get a tea towel. Your plate is going to be hot. So what you do is you got your tea towel or your oven gloves and you take the plate off. Right? And you take your time and take your foil off. Look at that. Okay? This is the reason why you have your kettle on. See? Look at that. See your rice? So what we're going to do is we're just stirring it up. Because remember we're going to stir fry it, so we need it to just cook, yeah? We're going to add our water now. It's a little hot. There you go. Drip drips. All around the pot. All around the pot. Did you hear that sizzle? There's a little sizzle. Oh, it's gone. But you'll hear a little sizzle, right? That's telling you that your, your rice needed water. There you go. Did you hear that sizzle? There you go. Yeah? See? The steam's coming through your rice. We like our rice, Shelly. We don't like rice pudding. Yeah? There you go. Just make little holes in there so it comes through. Right. And then we put our paper back over. And then we put the lid back on. At this stage, you check your flame. Our flame's okay. Just a tiny little bit, but not too much, because we steam rice, we don't boil rice, yeah? You can see steam coming through that you gently, you put it away from you. Wow, look at that. Oh, look at your rice. There's your rice. You see how fluffy that is? That's a big pot of rice. So if you're having guests and stuff as well, so right now at this stage, what you could do, 
We never use the same spoon. There's a way of testing, but I've got gloves on. But those are spread. You just, when we taste in the Caribbean, we throw it in our hands. That's how we taste. But I'm going to take a little bit of the rice. Blow it first in that, but this thing's hot. And what we're chucking for is to make sure our grains are not hard. Mmm, good rice. We cover it back and then we turn it off. Turn the flame off because what's happening still, we've got our foil on and if you still look, the steam's still coming out because the rice is still cooking. Didn't know that one, did ya? Mary. Hey, welcome to the music. Whitney's finished. Let me see if anybody remember Destiny's Child. This is all part of it, you know. It's not just cooking and eating. You have to do your washing up at the same time. But then when you finish, you can actually relax instead of thinking, oh my God, I've done all that cooking and now I've got to wash up. We've got those bits done. Those are our peppers, garlic, yeah, and onions. That's ready. So what we do, we just cover that up there for the minute. Right, we've got our eggs. It doesn't matter what size eggs. We're gonna break our eggs. This is how we're gonna clean our eggs. We've got one bowl, or you can use a saucer. Let me show you what the saucer is. You can use a saucer or a bowl. But what I find is, if you put it on a saucer, I'm gonna put one on the saucer and one in the bowl, and I'll show you the difference, yeah? Crack it with either a spoon, but you can also use a knife to crack it. This is how we're gonna clean our eggs now. Inside, if you look, you've got some bits of egg trash or eggshell. Back home, we call it egg trash in the Caribbean, but you know what I mean. You take that out. And also, if you look, you've got these bits at the side. It looks like jelly. You just take your time with two spoons. See, it looks like jelly. Those bits you don't want in your egg. Woo. Destiny's child. Just take your time and take it out. There you go. See the jelly? This is what I call cleaning your eggs. Then you pull that in there. There you go. You clean your eggs like that. And you put them there. See that? Right, the next, right, and you just put it into your bowl. Right, what I'm going to show you, do it on the saucer. Why I find it awkward doing it on the saucer? Unless you're very steady. Same way, you break it. Okay, you see? You can see all them bits. If it's clearer, on a saucer, you can see these bits in the egg. Not everybody does this, but I've been doing this for a long time, so. And you just take your two spoons. I find it's easier with a spoon, and you clean your eggs. Now you need a steady hand with your saucer for some of you that are wobbling it about. And always make sure that this is close by. Because you're probably going over there with it and then your egg end up on the floor. So there you go and you just pour it in. Right, this is our eggs in our dish. And what we're going to do, we're going to do this too. We're going to whisk our eggs. We're going to whisk our eggs and also we're going to have a little bit of uh, black pepper and salt, but this is optional. It's up to you. Just a little bit, that should do. I call this seasoning our eggs. Just a little bit of salt you need in there, because we've got salt in the rice. Oops, that should be all right. And then we just whisk our eggs. Not with a whisker, with a fork. Right, that's our eggs whisk. So we've got our mixed veg, yeah? And what I need to do is, I'm gonna empty it out, because we've still got some frozen bits in there. Right, and then what we're gonna do, I'm going over to the sink now. Hiya, you all right? Yeah. What you do is, sorry, lovey, what do you need? You need the fridge? Yeah, go for it, go for it. Yeah, okay, there's some frozen bits in here. You can still see some of it is still frozen. But we don't know water in it. So what we're going to do is... We can either throw some of the kettle water, which is still warm, over it. 
You can have chop. You can the water. That's why I say, you see we put it all in the rice. You can even up with cold water too, but it's gonna hot water probably. But what it'll do, it'll probably cook it a little bit. Maybe it's best like that, we'll put that on. Let's just use some cold water for now. We're gonna rinse this off, just to get the ice out. We still use the cold water, we don't have to use the hot water really, but if you want it to kind of cook a little bit, but I like my vegetables crunchy. One of the things, I don't eat cooked carrots. I've never eaten cooked carrots. Some people might not like it. We've got carrots, peas. We've also got beans in there as well. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour it in our colander. A little um, gadget with the holes. Yeah. Pour it in there. We're gonna let it drain till we're ready for it, okay? Just let it drain all the excess water out. Right. So we can leave that there for the time being. Nothing else around it. Let it drain. We'll turn the fire on. Use this one. Turn the fire on. Right. We want our pot to get hot. What is good? This as well you can do in a frying pan. Let's get our pot hot a bit. This is a frying pan. But if you've got a bigger one, then you wouldn't need to have to use, you don't have to use enough to use a big pot like that. But if it's just for you, you can just use a frying pan. This size is okay. A bit of oil. Mm. Get a bit of oil in there. You see how fire is hot. If you've got a what fire is gone off. Where is it going? Alright, that should be alright. We're gonna do everything quick. Right, because of this size of pot, I think it must be enough oil. Let me see. Just to cover the bottom. Okay. Let me fix my apron, my apron keep. I don't know if you'll notice my apron, it says love. Yeah? I must always cook with love. You know what I mean? Whether you're cooking for yourself or you're cooking for somebody. Look at our rice. There you go, nicely steamed. We can take our foil paper off. Always put some love in your cooking, yeah? For your test, if the pot is hot enough, I'll drop a bit of onion in there. Nah, it needs to get hotter. Not ready yet. Come on, get it. Right, you see our onion? There you go, that means our fire's ready! So what we're gonna do, we're gonna throw all that in. why you have to get everything ready. We're gonna throw that in. Boy, I wish you had smell a vision right now. Cause I can smell the onions. Can you hear that sizzling? That means that your pot, your pot was right. Now for those of you that don't eat fish or prawn, shellfish, prawns, yeah? At this stage, or don't eat eggs. At this stage, you can add your vegetables, your mixed veg, okay? Remember as well, you know, we got the scotch bonnet in there. Okay, flavor, not heat. We let some of our veggies in. You may not need all of that. But it's a big pot, so. But you remember you're cooking for the family, innit? Yeah? You have to keep it on the move, yeah? Right now, if you're brave enough, you could turn your, well, your fire's high enough. We just want this to cook out a little bit. Then I look pretty. All the colours, yeah? Yeah, we've turned it up high. Normally, I do this in a big frying pan. It's like a wok. But, you know, sometimes you have to work with what you got. But one of the things as well is, if you've got a Dutch pot, I'm sure most of the Caribbeans they know about Dutch pot, yeah? But that's one of the next things I want to make it to, a Dutch pot, yeah? Listen, no black house without a Dutch pot, you know, always. You can fry, you can boil, you can cook, anything. Anything in that Dutch pot. And it lasts for years. So my first one I've had for over 30 years, yeah? Yeah, we're getting there now. See our thing gone again. This thing. I need to clean my CDs, you know. Because every time I bring them down here, come on, let's see what's next. Let's see.
Come on, we're getting it together. I'm gonna light me up. Hey, look who it is, Auntie Jen. Come and join us, Jen. Come on. Smells good. Come and join us, honey. Amazing. Look at the color. Mm -hmm. The color is so nice, isn't it? Oh wow, amazing. Yeah. I'm in a dust pot. The rice is done, so I'm just trying to sweat this out. So you've got white rice there. Yeah, pre-cooked. Mixed veg. But the eggs, come people, because we've got, oh, prawns. We've got prawns in the fridge mm -hmm. that we took out. Because these are best to keep them in the fridge until we're ready for them, but it's not long before we're ready for those. Okay. We've got the soya sauce. Soya sauce. The famous soya sauce. Hey, listen, don't run for the soya sauce, you know. Mm. This is a real good soya sauce. And I noticed that that's got seasoning in it. Right. There you go. So you don't need to be adding no heap of salt or anything like that. Okay, if you look in here, see it's making water. Mm. Yeah? Okay, yeah. You have to try and get rid of that. By steaming the veg at the same time? Yeah. Because the veg was raw. Boy, Auntie Jen, check me CD for me, please. This now, because we used the frozen veg and it was retaining liquid, but it's still steaming our veg, our eggs. I don't want to just drop the eggs in there. Yeah? So what we can do is, we can do that separate in a frying pan and I'll show you how to do that afterwards, yeah? For those of us that don't eat shellfish, prawns, or have eggs, you can add your rice. Yeah? And I'm going to do that now. You see that? Auntie Jen is turning the music down. Volume, volume, volume. It's on 20. Listen up. Give this one up. I apologize. Just like I don't have my big old speaker box in here. You know? <laughs> so nice already. Right. We can start adding rice. But because I don't have a massive spoon, you can use anything, a cup or a bowl. And you go into your rice and you add it. Yeah? You had your rice? Yeah? Okay. Right, we have the rice. And one of the rules I have as well, you know, when I cook rice, and somebody's dishing out rice, if it's not me, take the rice from the side of the pot. If you take it from the side of the pot, not the middle of the pot, that really annoys me. And all my regulars know that, yeah? And see what you do? You're mixing it all together, okay? Because our liquid is coming out now, we're going to add our soy sauce. Right, we're going to add our soy sauce all over. Yeah, and then we're going to mix again. Then what about the prawns and the egg? We're going to deal with that in a minute. If you feel like it seems like it, you can lower your flame a little bit. Because your veggies are cooked now, just lower it just a little bit. Right, and we could add some more rice to that in fact. Because everybody's having lunch today. The rice is looking good. And you're going to dish some out now into a bowl. For your friend or your friends that do not eat shellfish. Because we're going to add our prawns and our egg. That's Auntie Marsha, everybody. Oh my gosh. I've missed you, honey. Oh. Huh? Are we having um, I wish we having fried rice. Eat prawns, don't you? Yeah. I eat eggs. I just made fried rice with prawns. Okay, look at that. Great way to see tonight. Tiny bit of oil. Right, we're going to do our eggs. And then we're going to just finish off the dish. The tiniest amount. That's it. We don't need more than that. There you go. Right, and then we're gonna scramble our eggs. I'm just trying to see if it's ready. Right, it needs to get a little bit hotter. Let's get in there. Right. Right. In the meantime, we're gonna open our prawns. To these ones, large king prawns. Sage means you can't advertise, you know. <laughs> no favoritism here. The thing is, as well, is you can actually, when you're boiling your rice or steaming your rice, you can actually have prawns in there while you're steaming it. So that's a different way again of doing your rice. We've got our pots getting ready. Right, those are our prawns ready. Right, our pots ready. 
Pour it in. You have to do this quick now. And just keep doing this. Keep doing this to our eggs. Yeah. There you go. Always hold on to the handle because some of these pots they slide on the thing. There, you don't take no time at all. There you go, just keep doing that. As long as the pot is hot, just keep moving it around. Get all your little crunchy bits. Them crunchy bits nice, you know. Nice. Well, leave me alone. Don't you leave me alone. You see, I change the tune, you know. I think Whitney had a headache, man. I need to clean my CDs then. There you go. You see that? We move our pot back forward again. You know, it might seem this is a long thing, you know, but remember, you know, when you're cooking, you're cooking with love. Right, we've got our bigger spoon. We're going to add our eggs. Put this in there. In there. We're going to add our eggs and we're going to stir in our eggs. Right, and the same time as well, we're going to add the prawns. These are, member. these are pre-cooked because we don't want them to go tough. Prawns is a thing, especially pre-cooked ones, yeah? When you've already, when they're already cooked and you leave them too long, they go tough, what I mean hard, but we still, these you watch and see, these are still going to be nice and soft, okay? Everybody want to eat the prawns, you know, and then we just mix everything together. This soy sauce is all-purpose seasoning. So you don't need to be adding. If you notice, I haven't had no other seasoning. Everything is in this. So try and get a bottle of this. I think they do bigger bottles. Yeah? So try that. It's a good soya sauce to have. Right, there you go. Does it looking now like fried rice? I hope so. And you just mix everything in together. The steam, see? We still got the fire under, but the steam is what's gonna, is going to do our, um, cook our prawns okay I hope you think this was a nice simple dish to do but the main thing our main ingredients today was our rice yeah because everybody loves rice and rice goes with so many different things yeah there you go the prawns on the top so you can see there's prawns in there everybody always go for the prawns you know there you go and what you do now turn your fire off and you cover it with your foil till when you're ready to eat there you go that's your special fried rice with prawns eggs remember basmati you know and we've got green beans in there and we've got look sweet corn carrots so you're getting your veg and that's a nice way to eat your veg we just cover that for a little while because remember when you put that on there it's still steaming until you're ready to serve what I've forgotten, there's one thing I've forgotten to do. When we dish out, we're going to want some of these on the top. So we're going to wash these off and then we slice them. This is what we call our little garnish. Who likes coriander? Can always put coriander. But fresh coriander, not dry one though. Don't put no dry coriander in it. You can push fresh coriander if you like. See all these little bits? You don't really need these. And then all these you take off, yeah? To call these bits off. Right? So visually first, check because sometimes we get dirt in these. Make sure there's no. I feel it fly out. I feel it fly out. Only if anybody know this tune, you know, remember this tune. I feel it fly out. This is for our bones. Right? Then we're gonna chop these. Wrong way to do them. You've got bigger ones as well. They've got um scallions or scallions bigger, but the head down here is like this, big. And what you do, you can slice them on a slant. Yeah? It looks even better when it's the bigger ones. Because then you've got that effect. Yeah, because you can do your food and then you put decorations on. So the best knife. But you can see what I mean. You see they're on a slant. When it goes on, then you'll find it. I'm going to do a plate, dish out a plate, and then I'll put it on there so we can see our final. Listen, you've been standing up here cooking, man. You want to see what it looks like on the plate? Right, we're going to dish out one now. This is just a fancy way of doing it. Mm. 
You know, you look laughing away at the song on the background, but boy, you know what I mean? I know you look laughing at the tune on the back. Lonely whiny. Right. You could do this when you're serving your rice. Yeah? Just to make it come out fancy. If you want to, I just want to show you what it looks like and then put that on. Right? And the easiest way. Freedom crumble! You get your plate, put it on top of your rice, like that. Put your plate on top of your rice. Then you turn it upside down. To be in the middle. You have to decide where you're going to put it. If you're going to put it to the side, because then you're going to have, if you've got rice, you want your meat and your veg, so you want it nice. And then the magic thing will lift up, and there you go. And then what you could do, what you could do is add a few little prawns on top, so they see, you see that? Right at the side. And how you want to do it. Or add one on the top there. Yeah? To show them that you got prawns in there. Right, there you go. So you can choose any little bits. We want little decorations. We want it to just fall over. You can do whatever you want to do. But with the bigger onions, depends. Whatever you want to do, okay? There you go. And the problems, whichever direction you want to do. These we put back in the fridge. That now, the other thing I was going to tell you as well is if you've got any chicken that you've cooked the night before, any meat in fact, you could have sausages, that's all you've got. You make your sausages, yeah, or even a bit of fish, it doesn't have to be prawns, even a bit of fish that you had yesterday, just break it up and then you add it instead of the egg and the prawns. You can add your meat into it, a little bit of chicken. If you know you want to do stir fry, and you got some chicken, add your chicken. Wow. So that's the one without prawns, I'll show you again. That's the one with prawns and this is without prawns. That's just your, you can have it like that. Yeah. You can have it like that. If you have it in a bowl, you can still make that shape if you want to. You don't have to, but it's up to you. Yeah. There you go. Oh, look who's turned up. Michael, come in, Michael. Hello, hello. Give me a social right. distancing. Hey, now, who's our rules? Come on, give it to me. Mm. Yes. There you go. Yeah, one. Yeah, hey, yeah. my wheeler. I'm in a Tesco as you hear now. There you go. And the back one. Come on, the man. Give it to me. There you go. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Oh, come on. Which side? Back? Yeah, back, back, back. There back. you yeah. go. Uh, Michael, no, no. Well, you need to taste this, quick! You need to want to... Yes, ah, I need a taste that. You're not allergic to prawns, are you? No, no. I'm Always not. make sure you ask if anybody's allergic to fish. Yeah? Any kind of fish. Stir fry rice with the prawns. This mm -hmm. one is for Annie. Okay. Try and tell me what you think. Let me come back up Annie's one. This is Michael, everybody. Another team member. Michael does sports. Say hi to everyone, Michael. Mmm. 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 You're not just saying that, are you? Nuh-uh. I've got to do it for the cameras, isn't it? <laughs> nah, it's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah? What, do you, what season is that? Ah. This is our magical soya sauce. There's other things in it. Oh, okay, okay. But for the um, soya sauce bit. Yeah. Michael, take it, 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 take it
but that's how I wanted to start it off with rice because rice is a base yeah and you can put anything with rice or put anything in rice yeah so I think next week we're doing I think next time we're doing curry chicken mm -hmm. I know you love that one right so see we have the rice already basmati is the best right so you don't enjoy make it and then post it and let me see and if you like just put up a thumbs up okay you won't be able to see it soon and um i hope you enjoy it yeah and you lot be safe and i'll see you guys soon and i know that a lot of you has been down because unitas is like your second home you know what i mean but you know so when you come in here you have to come in the training kitchen you know that already innit? you're going out with a full belly there you go so you like we'll take care is that it baby the finish now bye everybody see you soon see you next time big up man hey can i be chill with the man hey hiya i know you have to come over here man play this one because i don't know why you look at all my 